What's going on guys? Well, welcome back to the channel. You can see it behind me. No, you can't. It's out of focus. And this, this chair is really creaky. I've literally just uploaded the video for the, for the hardscape and it's already time just to get started on the planting. I can't wait. I've got so many plants ready to go in. I've been growing my own ones in like storage tanks for ages. Let's get them in. <laughs> Right then, here is, oh, sorry, <laughs> not a good start, let me move that. Take two right then, here is where we're at. Right then, in the first video, we built the stand. In the second video, I laid out the sort of base underneath all of this. I laid out the sand on top, decorative sand. We placed in the rocks, we placed in the wood, and here is, you know, where we're at so far. Looking great. Uh, last video, I forgot to put the dimensions up, so I suppose some people watching this for the first time, I'll lay some up here now of all the sort of thingies. <laughs> This is so poor, isn't it? Sorry. But as I always say to you guys, I'm not refilming it. Let's just go with it. <laughs> I, I do apologize. So we've got all the plants ready. I've got plants dotted around everywhere. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is just start sort of pulling them out of tanks and putting them in randomly or kind of randomly. I know roughly what I wanna do, but not completely. Obviously it's the standards of keeping short plants at the foreground, long plants, stem plants in the background. I mean, most of you will know about that, but some of you won't actually. Yeah, certain plants stay short, some grow, t grow tall and long. You want the tall and long ones at the back, the short ones in the front, because obviously you don't want to be constantly trimming and, and spoiling the view. And that being said, some of these sort of areas like here and round here will work really well with just small tufts of short plants going through, so I'm going to be doing that as well. But those back areas there where you can see I've actually not really put anything in, and the same on the other side, you can't see really, but you also can see. You know what I mean though. Those areas are completely clear, no hardscape, because I want to absolutely pack them full of plants plants looping over just so many plants i keep saying plants <laughs> the point is it's an ecosystem tank that means everything inside of the tank takes care of itself all we're going to be doing is some minimal little water changes and even that eventually will be very very sparringly like once every three months that's what i was doing on previous tanks that i've done like this right let's get our first plants in and as many of you know i've got lots of plant storage tanks so we're going to go next door pick out the ones that I want. In the last episode, I showed you some that I completely forgot I had, and let me show you. So first of all, down here, I've got loads to choose from. I've got some really nice plants here. We've got some nice booses. At the back there, oh, hang on, we're getting some really bad sort of blurring effects. So at the back there, we've got some Hydrocotton Japan, definitely gonna be using some of that. And you guys know there'll be pearl weed in this tank as well. <laughs> So out here in the grow up tanks, we've got some cool Gloucester stigma. I wanna be using some of that. We've got some hair grass. We've got some crypts dotted around. I mean, crypts aren't really fast growing, so they might not be opportun like ideal, sorry, for this tank. But even still, it'll be nice to have some, maybe once it's established. But down here, this plant here, I need to look up what it is. I'll try and find what it is and overlay it on the screen. I definitely wanna put this and have it going everywhere in the foreground because look, stays nice and short nice and short the other option was going to be the sag that we've got here but the sag grows so fast and that's i don't know why it's staying that short normally it goes massive we've got some really good plants to use anyway so i'm going to use them all just chuck the kitchen sink at it just go for it Well, we have got an absolute result there. There's so much of that plant that I still don't, Echiodorus quadra something or other. <laughs> it's looking so good, there's so much. I didn't know there was that much in there. Did I just say that? I don't know. Anyway, and there's lots of Liliopsis brasiliensis. That was also starting to carpet as well, which is brilliant. We've got more plants to use. Click subscribe. We want to continue planting. I'm just going to plonk all of those down there. Actually, that's right in the way. <laughs> and we can just take some that we want to use. So for instance, I've got some small ones there. That's all right. I'll just clump them together. 
and then just put them into areas where you want them. I mean, they always look best when you keep them close to rocks initially, and then later on they'll grow, you know, wherever they want to grow. I haven't left a huge amount of um, material to plant into here, so I'm just going to push them down a little way, and then you flick some gravel and some pieces of this stone over the top, and that'll hold it in place. And then it's just a case of continuing the process, using them all up, and eventually you get a nice covering, wouldn't you? But again, keep it close. Don't keep all the big ones close together, spread them about and you just get better coverage. And also they'll send out runners eventually and you'll get even more growth. So as you've just seen from the grow out tanks, there's loads and loads of plant bait. That was all from one cup, by the way, the Tropica plants. And um, that was one, one cup and now it's probably about four cups worth. How long has that taken? I think I, think I bought them ooh, a couple of months ago to be fair. So I've probably quadrupled the amount in a couple of months. But that's the beauty of having those grow out tanks. You can just stick stuff in there and just kind of forget about it until it's looking perfect. And then you can use it in your scapes, can't you? So yeah, tip for you, get a grow out tank if you want instant access to aquarium plants. Do not forget guys, you need to spray everything down really regularly. I often forget this myself. Oh, and this has just reminded me, I've not even stuck all that wood down yet. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Many of you will know, but you know, if you don't, it's nice and simple and nice and quick. But yeah, just get yourself one of these misters as well. They cost next to nothing and they work really well, like garden centers. It's meant for like pesticides, I think, but I just use it for the water. Look, you can just leave it clip, clipped on and just keep spraying. There we go. There we go, looking good, I like that. It's, you know, it's, it's in the right places and it will grow into more areas. In fact, this foreground is actually too sort of fine a dusting of sand to actually plant into, but it's not so fine that the plants won't grow into it. So that'll be good to see later on. Next up, I wanna put in the Liliopsis brasiliensis, this cool plant here. Again, it's one that sends out runners just like that last plant you saw, which I still can't say the name of, cause yeah, <laughs> but this is taller much taller so what you want to do with this i think in little areas like there obviously in the tank though there maybe over there little shoots of it i think i've got another portion as well so i'll use this first maybe use some more afterwards So next job we need to make sure we're securing down all the wood. So you can see it's touching some points there, there, and other places. <laughs> and you wanna use this cyanoacrylate super glue gel. Um, I'll get asked by quite a few people, is that gonna harm the fish? No, it won't, honestly, all the plants or nothing. It's, it goes in a, on contact with like water and things. So we are all good there. You can use this stuff, but it must be the cyanoacrylate stuff. That's awesome, that should work well. This point's locked there, so that, that piece of wood's done. That wood is locked to that wood, um, which is also that, so that's all done that side. This piece here is held down with rocks. That bottom part of there is done with rocks, and the rest is hooked onto the glass at the top. So that should be locked down and should not move. Please don't move when I fill it up. But before I fill it up, I wanna add a few more of these foreground plants. Then I'm gonna fill the water up to like halfway so that I'm not like constantly having to mist it all down. And then we can get started on the background plants. They're gonna look awesome once that starts going in. Right, top tip for you guys. If you're finding that you don't have enough time to finish a whole planting session in one go, you can do what I've done here and that's just lay a load of paper towel on top of the plants and just hose them right down with a load of water. If you put enough water on, you're probably gonna be good for a couple of hours. I mean, I've gone away and had some breakfast, come back and the paper towel is still wet, so we're all good to go. Just take those off and then carry on planting. This can actually be really useful if you started planting in the evening, say after work or something, and you really need to go to bed. This has happened to me a lot of times. Uh, back then I forgot you, I didn't know, not that I forgot you, I didn't know you could do it this way. I just, I just stayed up until like 3 a.m. planting, <laughs> filling up with water, making sure the fish were safe and then going to bed. But this time, you know, I've, I've learned this method and it's just something I completely didn't think of before. So hopefully it'll help you guys. And it means you don't have to rush the scape, rush the planting, all that sort of thing. Take your time with it. Yeah, it's just a really good way of doing it. Right, as I said, 
let's remove all of these and get those that last you know plant in. I'm going to use the dwarf sage that I said I wasn't going to use because it spreads too fast. But if I'm honest, it will look so good. And I'm just going to have to keep on top of it and you know oh I missed one. I'm going to have to keep on top of it and just trim it regularly. It's not that difficult. I mean, I say it grows fast. I've still got like a month in between trimming sessions. But then a month does come around quickly when you've got this many tanks. <laughs> right, first plants coming out of these storage tanks. I'm gonna choose the dwarf sage that's at the back there. You can see it. There's quite a few there and they're also a really good length for starting with. Um, they're about sort of like that high. Uh, not the bonsai tree, that's staying. <laughs> Right, we're looking awesome. Lots of plants dotted around there. I mean, I have just, you know, completely misted up the glass of water, but that's okay. Next job, let's fill it up a little bit. Uh, just so that this is covered in water, I don't have to worry about those plants in there and I can concentrate fully on what's going in next. Right, same as before, start at the front, work your way back. So we wanna be just in this sort of area here and here and for that we're going to be using the rotalas behind that will be the limnophila i'll show you all these by the way and then behind that the hygrophila cymensis 53b so as always i'm going to be using some of my donor tanks for rotalas i've got some in here for instance that's a rotala uh, rotala green actually some in there i've also got some across here in one of my little nano tanks some floating up there they need to trim up so i'll use those i think that's hr no 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 that's rotunda folia but it's going really pink because it's so close to the light Spinning round. I've also got some really nice stems in this tank as well that I want to get out and put over there. Again, you don't want to get them too long, otherwise uh, when you trim them back, like it just looks silly. So <laughs> I'm going to take some clippings of that one. We've also got quite a few dotted in and amongst the peak here in the Asian fish aquarium. There we go, oh, there's some. There we go, really nice. So I'm going to use those as well. So over here in one of my better tanks, you can also see the Rotala is growing really tall already. Best to trim that back. <laughs> this guy's going nuts, he wants feeding. So yeah, as I say, there's loads and loads of plants dotted around, especially over here in the Buddha tank. Up here, look, we've got some really nice Rotalas and they're really long as well. So I'm going to trim those right back. More fish coming soon for this tank as well, by the way, guys. So here is what I've managed to forage, guys. We've got some Rotala green in the bottom there, more Rotala green. There's Rotunda folia, which again goes pink close to the, to the light. And then I think that one in the middle is HR. I get, I'm not sure though, but it doesn't matter too much. I'm just gonna plant all these in little sections all over the tank. So guys, as with all the previous plants, longest stems still just go at the back, pushed into that gravel underneath where the nutrient layer is as well. So they'll already be off to a flying start. Now, some of the stems actually look a little bit scraggly, but to be honest, I'm not worried about that. They should sort themselves out. I don't know why they do. Sometimes they go like that. It might've been where some of the stems from above were blocking out some of the light and that's caused it some pinhole in that kind of thing. I don't know, they should recover though. I'm just making sure at this stage just to get a little bit everywhere. I mean, as time goes by and everything grows, we could just keep trimming it and replanting. That's how you get that really thick, dense look. You just keep trimming and replanting the tops. And before you know it, you'll just have something that looks amazing. Well, hopefully anyway. <laughs> right, that's looking good. We've got some good stems in there now, the left and the right side. Remember, you want to do like the same thing on both. I mean, you can have more greens on one than the other, but you know, it tends to work best when you've got like equal planting. If you're going for this kind of dual, I suppose it's a dual island sort of composition. Yeah, it works best when you've got both, even if it's small amounts of one on the other, but you know, planting on the same on both sides. First of all, and oh, that reflection is really weird, isn't it? Anyway, so that's where I put the glue earlier and I wanna cover that up. And to do that, I'm just gonna glue some like Anubius or something like that. Uh, actually some Trident fern would look really good there. Maybe I'll use that. Yeah, I'll try and find some. So actually I've got a massive piece of Trident fern in this tank that I could take out, but it looks so pretty. I just don't wanna ruin it. But that is literally what I put it in there for, to grow it, to put it in a big tank. And then it gets to this point, you're like, no, no, leave it alone. But I've got to, I've got to take it out. I've got to use it. Right, there we go, look. 
I mean, some leaves aren't looking too spectacular. I'm going to run it under the tap and sort of comb through it like anything that's bad that needs to come off, and hopefully it will. Well, that's actually good. That's a baby plant, look. But yeah, anything bad, like, sit so down here, look. Some of these leaves aren't looking great. Let's clean them up before we put them in their new home. There. <laughs> Yeah, usually you can just cram the trident fern or any java fern or nubius, that sort of thing. You can cram that into a gap and lock it in place. I've just placed that there and that will float up. So I'm going to have to put some glue down because there's nothing there for me to sort of pin it into. I suppose I could pin it against that front rock gap right in the centre there. Now I'll just glue it down, it won't move then. <laughs> Right, so I just want to fill it up to this level to start with at the moment, just so I can see how the stem plants are sitting, how everything's looking. It's looking good. It's not overly bright, but I don't want that. Brightness causes algae. And that light is the same distance from the top to the bottom of the tank as this aquarium here. And you can see this is looking absolutely lush and fantastic. That's the height of the light. This is exactly the same aquarium and look at the growth we're getting. So. It looks a bit duller at the moment, but that's because it hasn't got all the plants reflecting off of it. But I think it still looks really good, so we'll stick with that. Get more plants in the background now, I can see how they're sitting, and then I can think about topping it up even more. Maybe I don't want to top it up more, maybe I want to just cover these uh, sticks at the top here, or bits of uh, manzanita wood, <laughs> not sticks, <laughs> in bromeliads, something like that. That could be an idea. Oh, I'm not sure yet, we'll see. Because I mean, the point of this aquarium is that I don't have an absolute ton of fish in there. That, that would actually not be good for what we're trying to achieve, which is the ecosystem. Loads of fish produce loads of waste, so we're not going for that anyway. So I don't actually need a huge amount of water. Maybe I can keep it at this level, build up the back even more and just have a ton of immersed growth coming at the top with the Hygrophila siamensis 53B. That grows right out so nice and it flowers, which is awesome. It is now the next day, so as you can see, there's like a murkiness to the water. That's uh, the tannings being released from the wood. This wood's pretty good. It doesn't release tannings for too long. It takes about five sort of big water changes before it's, it stays pretty clear. You can add things to your filter if, you, if you've got like a canister filter, but we're just running this, so it'll be fine. It'll clear itself, but I'm not sure if the camera's going to be picking up, but this thing is making a hell of a noise. I think that's because I've just got all the fine sort of uh, filter floss in there, and it's actually going all the way to the top and sort of blocking water coming through so i'm going to modify that a bit i think so i can have coarse fine and then a tiny bit of coarse again to stop anything getting sucked in also casualty stem down <laughs> we've uh, dropped some of our stem plants well not dropped they've sort of been pulled up that's fine we can replant those not a problem Right, there we go. I mean, it's still making a bit of a racket, but it's an old unit, so what can you expect? I'll probably order another one, they're not expensive. So next thing we now need to do is fill out that back planting area even more, and then we can top the water up a little bit. I don't wanna to go to the top, remember, only a little bit more. Um, and then we can get all our back immersed plants as well, because I've got some really good hygrophila to go in there. But first of all, limnophila. We need loads of limnophila everywhere. And I have been growing absolutely tons of it in this tank, as well as the pearl weed, but you can see here, look, I've got loads of it already growing. I've just let it go nuts because I knew I wanted the length. So I'm gonna start trimming some of it out. This tank will be changing soon. All this whole row will be changing soon because there'll be a whole big tank coming in here and then another one. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. I'm gonna take loads of this, clump it all up together again and we can plant it in the back. Right, there we go. I've picked out a load. I've also got some Ludwigia there as well, which I didn't know I had. <laughs> it was so hidden in all the plants. But I also wanna use 
This plant here, it's very similar to the Limnophila, but it kind of looks a bit neater. I've got loads of it. It's outgrowing this uh, storage tank already, so we should definitely use it. I'll put what it is on screen because I, I can't remember the name of it. It's Myophyllum something or other. Anyway. Right, so we've got some really nice plants down here. They're just looking so lush, aren't they? They're gonna look brilliant. And we've got the right water level, I think. I'm just gonna stop it there. Just so I've got some areas there to potentially put some bromeliads on at a later date. I think that'll look great. But then we've also got enough water depth to just be able to put some really dense planting in there as well. There we go guys, I don't know about you, but I think that's really coming along and looking awesome so far, but there's still so much more to do. And I think that's a really good place to end this episode, guys. In the next video though, we're gonna be putting in the fish and more immersed plant, well, some immersed plants. I haven't put any in yet. <laughs> if you wanna support the channel, don't forget to click the link below. You can buy some of my merch, this nice discus fish on your t-shirt, for instance. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.